All right, guys, today we're gonna to talk about how we can write the polynomial function with the zeros, negative a half, three, and negative two. Okay, so up until now, we've been finding the zeros of polynomial functions. Well, in this problem, they actually want us to go in reverse. They give us the zeros, and now they're telling us to find the polynomial function with these zeros. So we have to work backwards, and in order to work backwards, remember, when we find the zeros of a polynomial function, we need to first factor that polynomial, and then we solve each factor to find the zeros. Okay, so we have to work in reverse here. So in order to do that, we have to know that this really says x equals negative a half, x equals three, and x equals negative two. All right, and remember we're working in reverse here, so we're gonna put it back into factored form. And once it's back into factored form, we're then going to expand it out to get the polynomial function. So we have to put these back in factored form. So in order to do that, we just simply move our coefficient over. So in this case, it's going to be x plus a half equal to zero. So there's one factor. Okay, we'll have x minus three equal to zero. And this will be x plus 2 equal to 0. Okay? Now we simply just put these factors together. So we'll have x plus a half, x minus 3, and x plus 2. Okay? So this looks very familiar when we're solving for the zeros. Right? This would be equal to 0. We take our factors and we solve and we get the zeros. Okay, but again, we're going in reverse now. So we want to expand this out. So in order to do that, I'm going to look at these last two factors right here, and I'm going to expand these out first, and then we'll work on this. All right, so we're just going to do FOIL here. So we'll do x times x, that's x squared. So let me write like this, x plus a half, and this will be x squared. And then we have x times two, so two x, negative three x, so this becomes negative x. All right, and then negative three times two, that's negative six. All right. And we simply just go ahead and distribute this x to each term over here. And the same thing with the half, we distribute it to each term there. So let's do that. So this will be x to the third power. All right, and this will be negative x squared. And then we'll have negative six x. Now moving on to the half, we get a plus one half x squared. Then we get minus one half x. Okay, and then we get well a half and a negative six. That will make negative three. All right. Now the last step here is to combine our like terms. So here we have x cubed. Well, we don't have any more cubes, so we just simply rewrite this one as x cubed. All right, we're done with this. We then go to our x squared value and we have a negative one and a half. Well, negative one plus a half, that's going to make negative a half. So we're going to write negative one half x squared. Okay, we're done with these. Now let's go on to our x. So we have a negative six and a negative a half. So we have a negative six and a negative half. Well, let's get a common denominator here. We'll use two. Okay, so we'll do this the quick way. So what did I multiply here by in order to get two? Well, I multiplied by two. So two times negative six is negative 12. And what did I multiply here by to get two? Well, that's gonna be one. So one times negative one is just negative one. And we get negative 12 and a negative one. That makes it negative 13 all over two, all right? So we'll write that now. So that's gonna be negative 13 all over two. And this is going to be x, all right? Gone, gone. And now we just write our constant term negative three. And this is complete. All right, so that is the polynomial function with the zeros.
negative half, three, and negative two. Okay, that is what it looks like when it is expanded out. 